They actually left instructions on how to bury him. It's actually a 120 page script. One lounge scene between a grave digger and him. We're supposed to chop him into 24 pieces. The number of frames per second in a unit of film. Then we're supposed to take a picture of each piece and edit them together to make a one second film. This film is set to premiere at Cannes, where it must be the first film shown at the festival. When, not if, but when the film wins the Palme d'Or, we have to take all the body parts and the award to the Drummond's Chinese Theater, where they will be reassembled and stuck in the concrete in the position that shows him holding the award. All of Hollywood is to be attendance, including his mother. Anyway, Film Freak's body is off to be burned. I'll have them throw the script in there with him. We can't link it to him. Directly to Nigma, I mean. As far as we can tell, they can't even hear each other through the walls. We reinforced that stuff years back, you remember. But we've moved Nigma to solitary, just in case. I don't want to find Twiddle Dumb and Twiddle D hanging. We asked him, of course, why and what and all that. He says he only talked to you. I pressed him. He says a lot of things. I don't want to get into that. He's not in a good mood. Maybe we should have had him isolated from the beginning. It's... I mean... This is how we've always handled it. I thought I was used to him. But all of this... I don't get it. What's the riddle? Dana Tierney, former headmaster at Andeater Academy. Get out. Your son recently killed a man. He always leaves a clue before he does. This time, he didn't. I'm trying to find out why. <laughs> I talked to one of his people. A few days before the murder, he dismissed all of his usual subordinates. He told them he had to take some time for an elderly parent. On his school records, you are listed as his only guardian. <laughs> Mr. Tierney. Stop, you think I won't. Despite the rumors in the press, I am not omnipotent. I have an unfortunate weakness for mercy that has too often led to careless mistakes and lingering pain. However, the moment you fired that gun at me, I lost my taste for any Mercy. So, as you pull that trigger, know that that weapon is aimed at you. That you are making a careless mistake. That your mistake will lead to lingering pain. You... Ugh. My son is an idiot. He can read at a year and a half. New Greek, Latin, and calculus by the time he was five. By 12, he had another dozen languages, and was showing genius-level aptitude in every topic. From literature to genetics to music theory, to say he was a prodigy admits that others might occupy a category with him, and my son was unique. I dedicated my life to him, to ensuring that such potential would be nurtured, developed in a fitting way. Every day, every night, we worked. And where my limitations showed themselves, I hired tutors. I spent my life saving on an army of learned men and women to expose them to every corner of academia. Finally, I was able to get him admission to the beloved and the Manning Academy to which I had dedicated my life. Due to his excellence in academics, they could not deny him, despite the fact that his mother, she was... she was not suitable to their standards. Regardless, there, though younger than most of his peers, he excelled. The only student in the history of the institution to earn perfect marks seven semesters straight. The only one, mine. Teacher after teacher came to me to boast about the boy's intelligence, his potential to become a great scholar, a great man. They had seen the best children the world has to offer, and Edward exceeded them all. There are Waynes, and Holtz, and Luthers. I have known them, taught them, studied them. But next to my boy, <laughs> I 
and still, he's an idiot. I have not spoken to Edward in 30 years. Since the basketball court and the... Since he started with that Enigma nonsense. Enigma? Oh, how clever. I will not speak to him again in my lifetime. He might have. There was no limit to him. But he made a choice. I gave him a path to follow. I laid out the brakes, placed him on a good horse, showed him the way, and let him go. And he... He pulled up on the reins, turned the animal, and giggled, and trotted off to, to play. I did not wish to play with him. Why did he go? Why would anyone? It sure is a fun little riddle, isn't it? You should ask him. See if he can crack it. My son was blessed with a gift. Blessed! And he wasted on games. And such he has ruined his life. And mine. Is that enough to earn a little mercy? Please, come in. Hello, Professor Yellen. Hey, something I can help you with, Edward? Yes, I was preparing for the next exam, sir. And I would like to know if... If it was... If you were to, if you were going to have another riddle on it that is worth points, I would like to know. I feel it is unfair um, given school policy, and I would like to lodge an objection before the test is, before you give it. <sighs> it can't be easy being the son of the headmaster. Everyone here is from big East Coast families, blue bloods down the line. I imagine that's kind of frustrating at times, right? Like... Are you trying to prove yourself to these people? Sir, with great respect, I do not believe it is fair. If you wish to make it extra credit, that is a different matter, but being unjust is not... It's not what we are taught here. You are in violation, and I will report you. You're a real good kid, Edward. Does anyone tell you that? You're smart, yes, but you're also, you know, you have your own cool to you. Maybe it's not everyone else's cool, but, but I see it. I want to encourage it. I want you to be proud of it. You should be. Sir, I don't want any more riddles. It's not fair. I love that you're doing this, man. You're Byron. You're rebelling. It's a natural and beautiful thing. And that's why the riddles are there. So you can face an obstacle, be frustrated by it, but then overcome it. It's okay not to know things. It's okay to have to struggle. That's what school is for. So when struggles hit you in life, you don't just crumble. Why... Why do you hate me? I don't, man. Honestly. No one does. I, I swear. Listen, please. There's no hate in this. It's just learning how to find the answers. I'm sorry. I'm not doing anything right. I'm going to go. I'll... I'll do good. I'll get it right. Cool, man. Good to hear. No one's rooting for you more than I am. I have all the confidence in the world that you'll figure this out. My advice, nothing's worth this stress. Take a break for a second, clear your brilliant head, and get a bite to eat. You are to be completely silent during this procedure. Any talking, any noise, any movement, any resistance at all will be met with swift and severe punishment. Now in preparation for your relocation to cell block C, please put your hands out in front of you. Have you talked to him? I don't like warnings. Let's start with rubber bullets. Bring him to his knees. Hey. Hey, Andrew. Before you listen to Gordon here, please remember that you have three children, Maya, Caroline, and Caitlin, who go to Brent Community School on Conway, and, and that I have escaped from Arkham over three dozen times, and I will again, and I will find them, and I will kill them. Officer, you have an order, not a choice. Chris, Daryl, Gil, Christopher, Raphael... Ron, Connor, Josh, I feel like I know each of you and your dear, sweet, soon-to-be-dead families. And yet, it's like we're meeting for the first time. There's a fun riddle in there somewhere. Fuck this! And so we begin. You heard him! I got fucking kids! I'm not letting this shit out of this room! 
Gentlemen, you will stop and you will stop. Who do you meet for the first time and also the last time? An Arkham guard. No, it's too specific. You'd have to be there. Who can you meet for the first time but never again? A bunch of dopey cops with bullets in their heads. No, I'm not getting it. It's very infuriating. This is why I need to talk to him. He just makes things make sense. Gordon, do you think you could call him again? I'd very much appreciate it. Thank you.